Hello, educators, and welcome to the start again of Replit's pedagogy sessions, where we're going to nerd out and talk all about cool teaching and learning stuff that's specifically to do with coding and computer science. Now, tonight, we've got an amazing guest. We've got the legendary Tony Scullion. Hello, Tony. Hi, Hi everyone. Who's, who's unfortunately had to see me dancing and all the behind the scenes uh, fussing where I've just been waving at myself for a few seconds in order <laughs> to catch the camera starting up. But hopefully I entertained you a little bit, Tony. Uh, and tonight we're going to be chatting a little bit about peer programming. We're going to be talking about team um, projects and really how you can get people to work together um, to learn better and in different ways uh, using different programming techniques. Now, I'll let Tony introduce herself. So I'm not mansplaining anything. So Tony, please, you go for it and I'll disappear for a second. Hi, so computer science teacher by trade. Um, been teaching for 10 years and also founder of the charity Jess Code, which is trying to close the gender gap in computing science. So we know that that's a massive problem across like all the country as well. So really trying to do as much as we can there. Um, and then also working with a lot of amazing teachers in Scotland to try and sort of shift the landscape in Scotland and make things um, sort of empower teachers, I suppose. So big shout out to um, Darren Bowne and Inverney, um, Ian Finson, obviously we know from Repo, Fraser Mackay and um, Tony Harkins, who we all work together and try and push um, CSS Scotland, which is really exciting as well. And lots of other exciting projects on the way. So um, yeah, just trying to do as much as I can to really help the subject and support teachers and inspire pupils, really. Thanks, Tony. Now, I just want to say, I, I know we've had two British people on for the last two sessions, but I, I don't just know British people. It just happens to be that's what we're starting off with. Uh, but we thought we'd take a little detour to the, the wonderful Scotland uh, for a little bit of time. Scotland is uh, a bit further ahead um, than my home country, Wales, is in rolling out a uh, really robust curriculum as a, as a whole country. Is it called Curriculum for Excellence in, in Scotland? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, we're rolling out curriculum for Wales because we just copied and pasted it and renamed it a little bit. Um, so uh, we, we know, we're doing something similar. We're, we're learning a lot of lessons from the Scottish system. So I, I, I've been quite impressed by all the cool stuff that, that they've been doing up there for the last couple of years. Um, so hopefully we can learn something from the people that really know about it today. Um, <laughs> should we start with the, the presentation, Tony? Shall I, shall I put it on the screen? And then I'll, I'll rearrange us. So um, there you go. That looks that's a bit better now. Uh, right. So welcome. Um, and uh, I'm going to start off with, once again, just... Uh, this is the danger, see, Tony. If you, if, you, if you give me options in terms of pictures, I will pick the silliest one because you've seen what my avatar looks like. Um, but if you do want to contact us afterwards, um, these are our Twitter handles. Um, and we, I mean, I, I, I tend to use Twitter quite a lot. Tony, you're, you're quite vocal on then, tweeting all your cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, well. live on Twitter. <laughs> run, run multiple Twitter accounts as well. So I'm assuming if you, you go through um, Computer Science Scotland, dress codes, um, yeah, the charter or whatever, they'll usually come to me as well. So, um, yeah, so feel free to reach out. I'm really happy to support. And I think for me, um, as a teacher as well, Twitter's definitely been a source of inspiration, but also support. Um, and it's reaching out and getting teachers who you wouldn't normally like, get to connect with as well, which is really, really good. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Twitter. I mean, one of the, one of the, the reasons that I like to run these sessions, Tony, is because um, often working in different schools across the UK, I've been like a lone practitioner. I've been head of department, yes, but I've also been the only computer science teacher in the school. So I've always yeah. felt that Twitter was like my extended staff room of people that also knew other nerdy things. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah it's, it's all really cool. Yeah, we've, we've definitely got like a sort of secret <laughs> computer science Scotland chat as well, and that's just grown and grown over the years as well. But um, but yeah, I think especially if you're by yourself, um, as uh, there, there's so many amazing teachers out there. And even if you, you're not active on Twitter though, you know, like, just message someone and, and ask to like have a chat and things as well. I think um, it's really, really useful, really, really good. And it's also that thing of like, you know, you don't always get to um, chat with people in like England and Wales and so on as well. So so finding like Andy, for example, um, who was on here before has been just amazing. And uh, yeah, I think it constantly pushes you and inspires you as well. So yeah, it's good. It gives you a wee lift when you need it sometimes. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, don't forget, you can also follow people on Replit now. Um, I follow all the people that do the really cool coding challenges. It's pretty good. Um, but for tonight's agenda, we've got a bunch of things to get through. So we'll see if we can do it in the hour we've got allocated. I'm feeling quite confident. Uh, but we're going to start with talking about what and why and a bit of uh, us chatting about the reasons why you might want to do some of these things, but the, why they're pedagogically sound. Uh, it's not just us showing off features of Replit. These pedagogy sessions are mainly about the pedagogy. It just so happens that I can demo some cool stuff in the background as well. Uh, we're going to show peer program in the classroom, uh, why you should do it with your students, especially when you're demoing stuff on the board at the start of the lesson, a bit of group projects and how to show work, 
a big push on web development and full stack projects. Um, Tony's made some beautiful curriculum for us on web development as well, which is free for you guys to use. So we'll have a look at a bit of that and we'll have a look at that, how that can work as a group project. I'm going to be doing a very, very quick demo, and it, it will be very quick, about using AI features to simulate peer programming because that's the new hotness at the moment. And then a bit of time for Q&A at the end. So let's get started. And the big question that most people have is like, why do we bother? What is it? And you will be impressed, Tony. I didn't have to Google this at all. I wrote this off the top of my own head. It was amazing. Code together at the same time. Do you think I covered that adequately there? Is that one sentence enough to describe peer programming? Yeah, and I think that the benefits as well, like, I think for that sentence of, like, what it actually is, yeah, like, um, for someone who doesn't, you know, especially not a teacher, um, it pretty much does. And I think one of those things that came with queer programming as well before it kind of became an official thing. I think a lot of teachers were like, oh, I actually, I actually do that as well. So it's kind of, it was really reassuring when you have all these like um, research come out as well and you're like, I actually do that. Oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, that's quite good as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good description. I think a good one-liner that captures it. It's quite nice to be validated, isn't it? And I know that yeah. we, had that big, we had that big study published recently, didn't we, that they were looking into whether it impacts upon um, the success of, of, of girls and, and women in, in, in program and it sort of didn't really find anything did it it sort of just went oh we don't really know but um I, I do think there's some there's some validity to it especially at an early stage now I'm going to give away how long ago I did my computer science degree now by saying that when I learned about this in the black and white days we called it extreme programming because it was the <laughs> 90s and everything was extreme um and it was part of it was part of the entire you know like scrum methodology and all that sort of um stuff of different ways to learn and, and I remember doing a module on it in university and I just thought it was the best you know yeah. being able to sit with somebody else and just not just be running on your own brains processing power yeah. I know that sounds a bit silly but it's trying to both remember syntax fix bugs as you go and remember the direction you're traveling in. it's quite a lot to keep in your brain yeah. sometimes yeah and, and especially like, for learners yeah exactly Sorry, That's what I was going to say. When, when you're when you're 12 you know like I think um, it's, it's definitely it's something that if it's really introduced to you as well and you're you're not sure about the subject and it's, it's just that confidence base as well. Um, you know, lots of other subjects you'd always work together. And um, I think with programming, it's such a good way to get kids work, working together, talking, um, sharing ideas and definitely even like, um, don't want to say what age I am, but like, <laughs> um, like my age as well, you know, it is, it's, it's working with people is always so good and bouncing ideas off each other as well. You know, it makes everything better. So, um, yeah, I think, I think this is a, such an exciting part of, um, sort of the computer science theory and research which is really really cool as well which just elevates the actual delivery of computer science and hopefully benefits the kids as well I've certainly seen the benefits I think in my classroom um, in terms of like confidence and things as well like from pupils um, so yeah and, and even you mentioned their girls I think like th there is although it might not come out that you know it's a game changer I do think it's that confidence thing all over um, yeah, so I definitely think it's such a such a good way to go, and especially introducing topics and things as well. So, no, I love it. I'm a big fan. Uh, what, what I like about it, it's like small-scale group projects. I'm sure you're the same as me. You've set group projects in the past, and you've watched one person do the work while two other people chat about the football results or something else, <laughs> and you think, I don't know what learning's really going on here, but in yeah. peer programming, we've got these two defined roles, haven't we? We've got the navigator and the driver. Which one do you want to speak about, Tony? Go on. Oh, so, um, I think like the, the driver. So um, I know like Katie. So that's another um, Scottish teacher. She's quite, she's she's brilliant. But she actually has like she gets like a steering wheel and stuff as well, and like has a little like oh, wow. table of her and navigator in the classroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of like um, I think fun things that you can make it like entertaining as well. But um, yeah, I think for for the driver, that is typically the person who's doing the typing. Um, and it is you know like. You've got your backseat driver, although it's meant to be a nice, friendly, um, supportive backseat driver telling the, the person like what to do and having that overview. But the driver is the person at the computer, um, you know, doing the, the actual typing and the navigating of um, the, the sorry direction of the mouse and so on as well. Um, so it's the one person being in charge of that role. And the the the, the backseat driver then is the navigator, and that's the person <laughs> that's not sort of just watching, but also like giving advice and oh, we're doing this yeah. now. What about this? And you'd be surprised how many errors the backseat driver or the navigator picks up. We, mm -hmm. you know, as experienced teachers, we're all pretty good at walking past and looking amazing by going, oh, I think you find you missed a comma <laughs> on that one. You know, we, we look at, because we see the same problems over and over again, don't we? But mm -hmm. um, it's really nice for the, the students themselves to be able to do that because more yeah. of your brain power is freed up for actually thinking about how the code yeah. is meant to work. Yeah. And there's a thing on the bottom there, which is, sorry, go on. No, no, no. And I think it's just building on that, that thing of, um, being the navigator and having the 
kind of time and space to sort of watch it pan out and see errors as they occur and you know and again talking and communicating and helping each other and um, but it also builds that sort of knowledge bank when they, they do have to go and do it themselves of oh I've seen this error before and you know like things to look out for as well so I do think there's a lot of things that come with peer programming that maybe aren't intentional but you know like it, it definitely comes as a bonus as well of it which is really good. I think the, the thing at the bottom as well is important and I think having yeah. as you were saying having the um at the steering wheel or whatever as a little token to give to people it's quite good for this last bit which is just switching regularly because mm -hmm. what you don't want is somebody to monopolize one or the other because they're only getting the, the learnings yeah. of the one side you want to learn everything so I love the fact that you can just maybe every 10 minutes just go and switch and you know yeah. if you've got these big comedy steering wheels and things they can press <laughs> them around and you know exactly who's doing it so it is quite nice to do that um but more than just like what is it I think that the, the main question is sort of like well why why mm -hmm. should we do this and I'll, I'll just start you off with this this um comment on the bottom because this is an actual quote from a student I taught that lives on in my brain rent free uh because because she said to me until I saw my teacher didn't know everything and had to fix their own problems, I didn't realize I knew what I was doing. And I thought that was hilarious because for some reason, students don't see you as fallible sometimes because they're used to you being at a different level to them in terms of programming. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you're not, you know, even if you're not really, even if you just read ahead of them, but it, to them, the perception is that you can just sit there and churn out thousands of lines of code and have a working video game or something. Yeah. When in reality, what we tend to do in the classroom is repeat the same examples. So we've done them you know, hundreds and hundreds of times, but doing the modeling and peer programming with one of my students, they could see me making mistakes, typing the putting colons in the wrong place, indenting wrong, mm -hmm. and they were correcting me. And I think that was a, that to me, that, that sums up why it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, I, I was certainly guilty of it for a long time of, you know, for ease, I think, as well, of just delivering the subject, you know, just having programs ready and, you know, having your slides all perfect. And, and it is that thing I don't think, and until similar experience with me, until a kid was like, but you never make a mistake. I was like, oh, my goodness, like, I do <laughs> all the time. Um, and then that really pivoted my practice and, I, and now I model everything. Um, and I do I think it's really important to make mistakes in front of them. I think maths teachers are really good at it. You know, like they'll, they'll do the working on the board and, you know, like show the sums and, um, you know, rub it out and, and so on. And they have that practice. But for computing teachers, I think a lot of the time, um, yeah, you, you kind of just want everything to be there. But um, yeah, I think modeling for me, I, I definitely have switched massively off um, doing everything like just just typing it but also sort of like the peer programming I know we've spoke about this before of having I would be the driver in the classroom like but then also getting the full class to kind of steer me and you know like oh what should I do now and and making deliberate mistakes as well of things that you know that are, are misconceptions that tend to pop up and to try and tease out what the class think and, and also correct it as well um but yeah I think mod modeling is huge and, I, and definitely for me I, I do it all the time like um making mistakes deliberately and not <laughs> um I like to say they're not deliberate but they, they definitely are it looks again. deliberate when we do them in the classroom though doesn't it that's yeah. the good part <laughs> yeah. I will just I, like I'd like to add to that like I tell my trainees all the time there's nothing wrong with making mistakes it's yeah. good to show students that you make mistakes as well you don't mm -hmm. need to be this all-knowing sage yeah. it's better for them to see that learning to program is a spectrum really it is mm -hmm. a, it is a, a skill set that you can be really good in one area and, and basic yeah. in another it is and nice I, for them to see that yeah, and I think it's that as well. It's um, showing how you cope, you know. So if, if you are a bit like, oh, that was quite hard there. I'm not entirely sure. And you don't know off the top of your head. It's actually fine to go and find a piece of code. And amazingly, that's what happens in real life as well. So, um, so yeah, I, I do think it's that those strategies of like coping mechanisms and things as well that um, is the good practice that you want kids to ultimately um, have when they're doing it by themselves. So, yeah, I think modelling is, is a big, big important part of it. And, and it comes in with peer programming as well. So, yeah. I've tried to sort of summarize the main reasons on the screen there, what, why like, we tend to use it. Um, the first one is seeing things differently, different viewpoints, different thought processes, different concepts, different familiarity with things. I mean, I remember, again, sorry, giving away my age now, but it's probably evident from my lack of hair on my head anyway. <laughs> but a, a number of years ago, over a decade ago, I remember that OCR put a computer science exam out where the, the scenario was all about landscape architects. And what they'd failed to do was think that maybe not everyone that who is who is 15, 16 years old sitting in an exam paper knows what a landscape architect is. So the uh -huh. answers were filled with with like, you know, arch actual architects build making buildings and stuff. Very few people realized they designed gardens. 
Um, yeah. And so those different life experiences come in helpful because, you know, if you sit two people together with different life experiences and they're trying to solve a programming problem, they can bring those different experiences yeah. to it. And one of them yeah. might know what a landscape architect is, which would be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've also got in there like supporting skill levels. And maybe you can speak a little bit to this, Tony, but I, I, I always feel that um, peer programming is the, the number one tool in my kit when I've got a group with very different abilities. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it is that kind of thing of, like, how do you pair them? You know, like, you know, what strategy are you going to take? Um, but yeah, definitely, I think that there is so much value in, in having that kind of um, more experienced person or competent person in a particular area with someone who needs a bit more um, help or support. Um, but then I think the thing about peer programming, which is so great, is that switching roles. So it isn't just like, oh, I'm, I'm not that confident in doing something and I'm just going to be paired with the smart kids. You, you actually do work together and you are like switching the roles and you do get a chance of becoming a leader. And ultimately, you all grow anyway. Um, you know, like, so it's a benefit for the person who might be more experienced and, and sort of um, explain it more and so on. But then also they're picking up skills from the other person as well. And it is that thing of like life experiences, um, all of it. Like I think it's just such a valuable skill in having that built in at... Um, secondary level um, even primary level you know I think it's so important because as well those skills are built up at university and so on when they do their group projects and then ultimately when they go in the real world as well so um, it's not just like a silly little research theory thing that you're you're actually um, doing you know just for the sake of it to deliver computing science it's actually like building foundational skills that people want in industry um, but you're doing that in the classroom which I think is so exciting um, yeah so I, I definitely I've seen that um, supporting skills as well and seeing um, both like benefits from all types of learners using that as well so it's really good. I, I think I've never like I've never seen such good work than when you've got a, a student that's struggled really loves the subjects but is really struggling and you mm -hmm. pair them up with somebody that's a really strong coder and the glee in their face is they can go write something that does this and yeah. the person <laughs> you know and and then vice versa where the person that yeah. knows a bit more what they're doing is oh actually you need to the yeah. glee on their face then get more done yeah. is, is I, absolutely I love amazing you know that moment like when um you know when when you hear the little cheer and they're like yes but like it's a team cheer <laughs> and they celebrate and uh, like but that is that it's that moment if you can bottle that and you know sell it like I think computing wouldn't have a problem but um but it's that <laughs> I've seen that using peer programming a lot in my class of like those celebration moments and those moments you'd love to capture on camera um and it is and it makes you feel like so so good as a teacher but knowing that kids have had that moment of like, I am a genius. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really great. I think mean, it's great. I will just sort of point out before we move on, because we are we have talked for quite a while, Tony. We were, we were worried about the time tonight, but I don't think we need to worry now. Um, it's the reduction in cognitive load. Now, you know, if you, if you subscribe to cognitive load theory and you've read the research on that, you know, you've only got so much uh, of your cognitive load to apply to a problem. Um, and what you need to do really is reduce and scaffold as much as possible so they can concentrate on what's important. With peer programming, they're not worrying about syntax. They're not worrying about mm -hmm. doing how to do this because they, they, they're essentially using two people's brains to solve yeah. one problem. And so you mm -hmm. can get to the point of the learning a little bit better, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And it's that, um, I think it's the ownership as well, you know, like, so it's not like if it fails or it sort of goes back to that sort of team celebration thing. If it fails, it's not just you, you know, you've kind of got that, the, the ownership, it's a shared ownership as well. So it's a shared project and, um, yeah, it's really nice to to kind of lean on someone. Like throughout life, it's always nice to have someone. Um, but to have moments in the classroom of actual learning and, and teaching, um, and like you say, removing that kind of stress that a lot of kids feel when they do programming for the first time. Of oh my god, I have no idea what I'm doing. But then it's okay because you've actually got someone to sort of lean on and have that chat. And um, yeah, I think it's really really nice as well. It, it does it removes a lot of stress and pressure. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic teaching tool. And I, you know, I think that the um, it's I think it's underrepresented. We talk about it all the time, but because people just do it, they, there's a there's a there's a lack of are you using it are, and people talking about it. It's just done, but there's a lot to it and there's a lot of subtlety to it. There are some problems though, and I think that it's worth bringing these up because it's not the sort of thing that you can just roll into a classroom and everything goes well. There, there's a certain amount of management to them, and and the first one I think is that it does require effective communication between the two people that are working, um, and. If you don't have that, some of the gains are lost. If they can't speak to each other and they can't communicate nicely or, or clearly, yeah. you do lose that that added benefit, I think. Would you agree with yeah. that? 
yeah, definitely, and, and I, it, go, it definitely goes back to the way that I would introduce this to, to a class, and that's thing of, like, I'd be the driver and, and the whole class is sort of mini navigators, um, and it, because it is, it's modelling that um, communication, and, you know, like, and also, if someone goes, oh, just add, like, a semicolon there, you're like, yeah, but, but what line, you know, where, and so it's trying to sort of tease out and pull the, the communication and all the skills that you want them to be able to do when they are a driver or a navigator, um, so yeah, it definitely, I, I mean, I've fallen flat on my face plenty of times where you go in and you think, this is going to be great, <laughs> and then it just, <laughs> it does not work. So um, yeah, there definitely is a certain amount of prep, um, and I think it's different for every class as well. Uh, you know, your, your health, your senior phase is definitely a different way that I've done it, um, but it's that thing of, if you've done it in, um, you know, the air, like first, second, third year, or, you know, like year seven or whatever, if you can build those skills and sort of introduce it all the way up, it, it sort of becomes a natural thing when they get to, um, national qualifications or senior phase as well so it's, it's definitely like got longer benefits um but yeah definitely got a little bit of preparation <laughs> beforehand to make sure it runs smoothly I think it's, it's like a, a picking up on some things you said then is that it's, it's putting the people together thinking about it it is one of the things we, we don't do much in computer science I think is lots and lots of group work and whereas it's I, you know, a P teacher is going to be very good at picking groups and making small teams very quick at the top of their heads. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we need to be more practiced at it to make sure those things are working. And there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. You can put the two top students together in a pair and they'll do amazing work. You yeah. could break up the ability level, you know, two lower ability, lower understanding students will help each other through because they'll have understanding of different topics as well. Mm-hmm. So there's no one right way. It just depends on what you want to achieve in that particular session. Uh, but that yeah. last one is one that I've always um, I've always thought about. It's just that because it is a group project, you can't then use that as the sole assessment uh, matrix. And it does need, I think, a bit of thinking about it, a bit of waiting. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's something that I definitely struggled at the start. Um, you know, you, you would just give them it and then they would do it. And although they're talking and things, but then you're a bit like, oh, right, how do I assess? You know, so that's definitely, yeah, I think that's where it's got the, the most thinking on my part that I definitely have to do I think the rest eventually you get skilled at yourself um and you mentioned there about sort of different levels and it's also I think um like friendship groups as well and, it, and it's not being afraid of you could do friendship groups to start with but then eventually like you know mixing it up a bit in the class as well once people are more comfortable so um so yeah but the assessment bit in the week and is yeah I definitely agree is the the important part I, I think we've talked enough should we should we demo it and show some examples yeah I, I feel like I need to show my demo slide because the animation <laughs> on that is beautiful. I, I'd say it, it's not it's not that good. Please, yeah. right. We'll have a look at a bit of example. Now, <laughs> we did we did build a couple of good ones here, but I think the one that um, I'd like to look at, if I can get my screen to change, which doesn't seem to want to do at the moment. Give me a, a second. What is happening to my computer? Right, See, this is how it's like something school. <laughs> Where you're like, yes, <laughs> I'm amazing. Sure <laughs> well, you know, interestingly, I think what's happened is that PowerPoint has crashed on me and killed my monitor, which is really, uh, really quite useful. Um, oh, I've got something back. Things ain't working on my Mac today, but here we go. I've got it working now. I'll bring my screen back up. Sorry about this, everyone. This is um, why peer work is good, because I didn't feel that I was failing then. I felt that we were failing as a peer, Tony. So exactly. thanks for that. You, you, took, you took away a bit of my, a bit of my worries there. Um, so we've set up uh, this team for you, and I've popped the link in the chat. Um, if you go and sign up, we'd like you to get started with uh, this piece of group work. I've set it up so that you can automatically all- allocate yourself to a peer. So if you go and sign up for um, the team, um, you should go straight in. In fact, what, I'm, what I'll also do is copy a, a link straight to that project and put that in there as well. So you can jump in there if you want. Now, the way I've set this up is quite fun, I think. Well, I think it's quite fun anyway. Uh, what we're going to do is going to try and use peer programming only using the tools in Repl. And you're going to use peer programming not to code anything, but to draw a beautiful illustration of your partner uh, without seeing them which would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> Replit has a, a, has a functionality where we can add draw files. So on the left-hand side there, you'll find this draw file. And we can use all of these um, options here as if they were a shared whiteboard. But we also have our chat feature, which is, and if I can zoom out and find things, I'm gonna add a pane with it in actually. I'm gonna add the plus button and put a chat in. I can talk to anybody else that's multiplayering within that window. 
and we can discuss what's happening and we can see what's going on. And I think, Tony, what we, I'll do is I'll, I'll fork this and we'll share it together and we'll yeah. try and do it live whilst everyone else is having a go, if that's okay with you. Yeah, no but worries. these are the sort of things you can do just to get people used to it. This is, this is a silly task, don't get me wrong. It is a completely silly task. But you can imagine, start of the year, you're introducing the concept of, of, of coding, um, and especially if you've got the ability to hear people at randomly amongst the class and just tell them what they look like and try and guess who it is, this works particularly well. So if you can get into that uh, and you can join a group straight away, it'll give you a list of who's there and you can pick somebody, pick somebody at random. Please use the chat feature to describe what you look like to the person and the other person can attempt to draw you. Don't draw yourself because you know what you look like. Right, so I'm going to fork this uh, for us, Tony, and I'll invite you in in a second, and um, we'll demo what this should look like. I'm excited. Like, what, what a great, um, I love that. Like, what a cool starting thing. Like, I'm, I'm very excited for this. I've never thought about doing this. <laughs> it's a bit of a cheat, though, because we can see each other. So, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it is a little bit of a cheat there, but never mind. All right, let me move that in there. Um, and let me invite you in, Tony, so you, you're in the same one. My computer, my computer is not having the best day today. Made mine public. Where's my invite link gone? Right, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a proper reload for a second, and then we'll come back to it. You've got a, a wee comment just saying, um, it appears that there's only one group, and it's already full. Let's have a look. This is clearly me uh, pressing the wrong buttons, so <laughs> don't worry. We'll sort it out in a moment. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the, this this is why um, setting these sort of groups up live, and I said this to you at the start, didn't I, Tony? Is a bit yeah. is a bit you've got to grit your teeth. The best thing to do with a team, of course, is to make sure you've got all your students in there already, and then when you set up your teams, you can see all this. In fact, what I'll do, I'll pull it up and show you what I'm doing here as I'm going. So, draw something cool is uh, what we're working on. And if you go to edit project, you get the grouping menu, and you are right there. We don't have the groups, so I'm going to reduce them to two and click auto assign, and it will generate the groups for me. So there you go, those people there. Um, there's a bunch of groups ready for you, uh, and I'll make a few blank groups in case anybody else wants to auto assign them to it. That's really cool. Like I've never, I've never seen that. Like how you actually do that. Um, so that is really, quite cool. Yeah, it's neat. I mean, it's it's one of these things that. It doesn't lend itself to as you know as people are signing in it's quite difficult to to mm -hmm. be on the ball with this and try and manage it but in most of these teams you've got your class in there at the start of september and they're the yeah. same people for the year so you can uh -huh. set these teams up you can in fact bring people into the groups beforehand if you want to which is what i normally do uh, and then you get some cool stuff there right yeah, so really let's good. see if we let's see if we can get ours working tony otherwise uh people are mm -hmm. not going to see the excitement of, of uh, you attempting to draw me um, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I know what it is. When you're in a draw file, none of the key commands work properly. There we go. Okay. So, can I share this with you, or am I going to fail? Do, do you know what? We've got it on the screen. You tell me what you, you look like, and I'll try and draw you. Okay. Um, uh, an oval head. <laughs> an oval head. Okay. So, yeah. so okay. Uh, oval, not yeah. circular. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, Glasses tonight, so sporting my glasses. Don't always wear glasses, but yeah, glasses tonight. I'm assuming they're the like, like circling. Yeah, they they look that looks really good. That's really accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? I'm just going to stop and say I I have an A level in art, believe it or not. Uh, oh, yeah, luckily, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I did I did it back in the day when you could do a few things in Photoshop and then. Um, and then people would go, oh, that's amazing. So that's yeah. why I did my level up. Right, go on, glasses and an oval yeah, head. Glasses. Got um, a few eyes behind those glasses as well. <laughs> um, a, few, a few eyes. Yeah, so I'm going to take you literally yeah. here. A few <laughs> eyes. We'll you know what's really funny about this is um, I would sometimes do, I don't know if anybody else has done that, where you sit back to back with someone and you pretty much do the same thing where you give them a drawing of a house and they have to like, describe <laughs> what it is. But it's that thing of like um, the communication skills. And so this is actually amazing, and I, I definitely change it now because you can do this again using like, and just using a platform that they're going to be doing anyway. Um, but no, I love this. I think this is this is so cool, and you could definitely see it if they've got iPads or whatever they could do this as well. Um, yeah, so a few eyes, <laughs> um, hair, hair kind of like past my shoulders, 
Um, here, past your shoulders, right? Okay. Yeah. No fringe. Um, so yeah, just kind of straight down. Um, <laughs> I'm, embarrassed. I'm embarrassed myself for this. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I'm going to change this as my Twitter profile picture, I think. <laughs> after. Um, yeah, a little nose after, um, just underneath the glasses, and then a wee smiley face. Um, a little nose. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I hope you no, that's good. I feel embarrassed for the entire the group of people that are having to watch this afterwards. I apologise to my old <laughs> art teacher as well. She'll be em embarrassed for me. Um, I can see some people <laughs> still having some trouble getting into the team, so I'll just go and have a quick look at that while we're, we're looking at it. But uh, what you said there, I thought was quite interesting. It's like, it's like that that exercise in in um, you said in sort of communication skills and stuff. Yeah. I'll I'll let you into a, a like a, a little secret um, that that um, I I had for planning lessons with with my students. And it was always, the older they were, the more I could steal things from Twinkle and the primary school resources, because <laughs> they loved it. And all yeah. you had to do was say, we're doing this drawing activity. And you know, behind the scenes, you've thought about it, you thought, we'll do something silly and, and properly childish, but they all really love it. The older they are, the more you can reuse primary school lesson plans is my, um, my takeaway yeah. from that. Yeah, and I think as a teacher though, you know, like the, the sillier the lessons, the kids love it, but it's also so much fun to do, you know, like as a teacher. Um, so, you know, I, I think like you had mentioned there about the, the architect thing and the sort of the, the theme of the like activity or whatever you're doing. Like, yeah, like make it relevant, make it exciting. Um, I think it's a big hook um, as well because kids get excited and think, you know, I'm not doing this today, am I? Like what, what an amazing thing. You'd like to think they go home and talk about it and things. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, re it's really important part of what you do, um, having like good fun examples. And also it's just so much more fun to teach that way. <laughs> I've, um, I've brought up somebody's uh, work live here because I thought that stick person was uh, was perfect there. Um, uh, the problem is I can't now look at pictures of people, I'll, you know, forever, Tony, unfortunately for you. I'm going to have to look at that picture I've drawn of you um, and, and use that as, as my example. Oh, here's a beautiful one. Oh, that's great. <laughs> this, that's is, good. this is really good. That's really good for the tools we've got available to us. That's really good. Um, without hair, though, unfortunately, everyone does just look like me, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a standard form factor. That's really good. I, I like. Please, please do take that activity idea and, and and go for it. And you know the student that you want to pair up with to demo this. You want to pick the one who likes being sarcastic and the one that will overly literally do exactly what you say, like I was doing just then. <laughs> Pair up with them to demo it and get them to draw crazy things that you're explaining to them, and then you'll get the fun going out of it. But it's just a good way of introducing people to the idea of working together in one yeah. place. Um, we it. also said that we 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 did say that we were going to demo a little bit how we'd. Um, so whilst you guys are playing with that, we did say we demo how how we'd peer program on the screen, didn't we? Um, yeah. So I'll bring up what language you'd like to do this in a bit of Python, maybe. Um, go for it. Python's not my strong point, but go for it. But we can get help from from them. I'm hoping other people can help me. This is brilliant. So chat, if you if you want to come back and help us out, we're going to try and demo the way that we would do a bit of peer programming um, on the screen. Now, now the, as Tony said a couple of times tonight, one of the things that works really, really well is, you, is once the, the students are into the idea of peer programming, you become the driver on the board and the entire class becomes a navigator. And they're shouting out ideas and how to fix things and how to change things and, and what to do. And you can take their ideas literally and you can break things and you can run things. What I thought we might do, Tony, for this is we'll, I'm saying this again, sorry, I'm having a, the fun. We've just launched our 100 Days of Code um, course on Replit where you can actually learn in app. And I've, despite writing them uh, and recording them and Brittany doing all the work for me, um, I've only got to day three. So I thought maybe we could have a look at the, the challenge for day three and see if we can do it ourselves. Do you fancy that? Yeah, go for it. I'm giving things away here now. Uh, but let's have a look at the challenges for day three. So day three challenge. We're going to make a, a wacky recipe maker. We need to ask for a type of food, a type of plant, a type of cooking, a word to describe burned food, and a household item. So I'll be I'll be driver. Sorry, I'll be, um, yeah, I'll be driver. Tony, can you lead the navigators for us? Go on, what are we going to start with? Um, let's go for food. So type of food, let's get a little input for that. Okay. Are we happy with that? Yeah, that was good. Ooh, sorry, <laughs> that was I've got, I've got, I, well, it's very fast because I've got my AI features turned on. Um, I love it. 
this is this is the demo we're going to do later. I'm sorry, but the um, the AI features can simulate a bit of peer programming for us. In fact, what I might do is just turn those off momentarily. Otherwise, I'm uh, showing off all the cool things a bit too early. But there we go. Turn that off just for a second, and hopefully we'll be all right. Uh, so yeah, in there, Ghostwriter did give us away a little bit. It's good to yeah. put a message in there, a little prompt. Um, Darren, thank you very much, because you've brought up uh, Food Equals Input, so you've got that there. And you've well, I'm glad you're here, Darren, because Python, I'm, I code in Java usually, so thanks, Darren. <laughs> yeah, oh, help me. You know, every, every time somebody says they code in Java, a little bit of me skips a beat. I, I, I love Java. That was my first love. But unfortunately, all the all the English exam boards basically just decided everyone was working in Python, so we all had to oh. <laughs> we all had to change. Yeah. So, uh, what is your ooh, favorite food? And no, apologies, see what you're doing that, I'm, no, well, no, apologies that I'm writing it all in, in in American English, but I'm just so used to doing that now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's the way but it's that, going. So now that that moment there, you just kind of had a little error within the question. But that's such mm -hmm. an important teaching point as well. Of the moment that you could run it and show that actually it's okay if there's a, a spell mistake within it. So I do think little things like that, when you are delivering it as a class, you could pause and, you know, be like, you know, do you, is that going to run? Whereas then if you made a mistake, you know, an actual syntax error, you, you could be like, oh, that, that's an interesting chat. And I think it's teasing out those misconceptions as well and, and sort of knowing those misconceptions as a teacher of, oh, these are typical things that kids would do. Um, but I know that you've just done it automatically there. Uh, but yeah, so let's go for it, right? So what is your, your bestest food? I th I th we won't do all of them. We'll just do we'll just do yeah. food and a, and a method of burning. Is it so? Okay, chat. Let's see if we can help me. I need to get. I need to to take in uh, a type of burning, a type of a way of burning food, uh, a, a, an adjective that would describe it nicely. How am I going to do that? And this is where the twenty second delay between us being live, Tony, and the the chat becomes <laughs> a bit awkward because we now need to fill twenty seconds of time, hoping that maybe Darren comes in again. To help <laughs> or us or out. someone else. Yeah, you. you can do a little dance, David. I, think I, I was see, she's, she's seen me doing my dancing there. Uh, by the way, uh, our, our TikTok shorts for our new courses may ha may spoilers may have a little bit of my dancing in them, um, and certainly there might be a uh, surprise dancing cameo for me in uh, one of the days, uh, probably about towards day twenty in the hundred days of code videos. You, you'll have to go through the course to see it. I don't think anybody's helping us, so uh, no, let's let's give it a go. We'll, say, we'll we'll do something like that. Ooh. Yeah. And then, um, all the sort of the mistakes I'm making as I type as well, I think, I think they're always useful because you're modeling like yeah. development, aren't you? So yeah. if, you, if everyone makes mistakes as they go, nothing's perfect. So I need to concatenate these things together now in a print statement. Uh, and we could ask, I, I'd like, the way I do that is I say, oh, I need to concatenate them together now. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd use that as an opportunity to ask somebody to, What's, can, what's concatenation? Because it's a word they always hmm. forget. Yeah. Uh, and I'd, I'd then ask them somebody else to tell me how to do it. So go on, Tony, you're, you're my navigator. What am I going to do? Do you remember how to concatenate in? I don't know if it's the same, but like you, you would get your two variables and then do your addition sign to kind of join them together. Is that the same in Python? I don't know if it is. We'll see. We'll see. This is, this is the beauty of it, because when you're, leading, when you're running it, you can run it and see if it works. So what's my bestest food? Let's put um, a cheese. Uh, a method of burning it, um, uh, microwave. Oh, it's worked. Now, notice that one of the things that Python does is that it doesn't put spaces in automatically yeah. when you use the, the plus yeah. operator. So we, you know, that's a good discussion point, isn't it? Straight away, there's a yeah. mistake in there. We can bring that up and we can mm -hmm. talk about it more. Yeah, and I do, and it's that thing. Yeah, it's, it's that thing of like, although the task is just this, there's so much more and so many layers that you can pull in from like prior knowledge and just general good practice as well. So yeah, I, th I think this is it's a really good example of um, being able to do it together as well, which is good. I, I think that the, um, the doing the, the paired programming on the board is like, honestly one of the most powerful things you can do uh, because it does make a massive difference when you can direct exactly how everything's going. Right, let's uh, move on a little bit, Tony, because we are pushed for time. But I do want to talk a little bit about group projects as well. Um, because as you scale up from just having two people working together, it does change the way it works a little bit, doesn't it? Um, and I think as soon as you go past two people, you lose that defined role of navigator and driver. So yeah. you do have to be a bit more aware of those old group project style dynamics. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think you, you definitely are right. And it's that's what's so unique with peer programming. You know, you've, you've got two people, two roles, um, they flip regularly, but anything more than that, it kind of shifts the idea of it. 
Um, still really good though, and I do think it's that sort of next level, um, you know, bringing in more people. And again, it's also that you can tie in saying, this is what computing is like in real life. Although I know in Scotland, um, the assessments are typically individual, but in real life, it's you're working as a group and you're working as a team and, you know, you are chatting with people. It's not, you're just working by yourself. So um, there is times that you can pull in those kind of real industry examples as well. So yeah, group projects are, are really good. And I do think sort of the next kind of step once people are, are a bit more confident in going over particular concepts and so on. Um, so yeah, although it does lose that navigator driver, but um, but no, it's, it's definitely another exciting part of delivering computing. I think that the reality is that a lot of these group projects tend to either be things that we put in to teach other things. Like I tend to do web development projects as a way to to get that bit of the syllabus, which is like all the moral and ethics stuff in the thing yeah. that, you know, to do it quickly, you could just do as a little essay. I like to do little group programming projects to bring in stuff like that. <laughs> um, but it, unfortunately, the way the way, certainly the way the UK assessment system works is you would you'd struggle to be able to use yeah. a, a, a big group project. But it's interesting, I think, that the scale increase without the complexity increasing because mm -hmm. you can suddenly go from just building a simple program that's 20 30 lines to you know working user interfaces and database access systems and as long as you've yeah. got a group with the right dynamics and enough people mm -hmm. in them they can coordinate and build something bigger yeah and i think it's it goes back to that point that you made at the start it's also bringing different viewpoints in as well um but also showing them that there's different ways to solve a problem you know, so there might be a little team who, when you're doing peer programming, that do it a particular way or whatever. And then it's interesting bringing those two teams together because then they sort of realise that actually it is OK that we've got two different ideas, but it's just a different way of solving the problem as well, which is good. As you say, it's, it's, it's more real world, isn't it? Like those improved yeah. interpersonal skills, the things you'd expect from a group project. And what I always like is that personal accountability. In a software development group project, it's very hard for somebody not to do any work because... Mm -hmm especially with our new history plus plus feature yeah. in Replit, you can see what contributions everyone's made and when. And oh, it's <laughs> so it's very hard to hide behind yeah. it. Absolute game changer. And I think it's the same with like, I'm, I'm a Google person. So like Google Slides and all of that. Um, and yeah, seeing that actual like history and, and you can call them out and be like, mm, well, you never actually done anything. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a game changer. And, and I think students really appreciate it as well, you know, because there's nothing worse than sitting in a team when, you're doing all the work and, and everybody's getting the credit. So yeah, it's, it's such a good feature. And I'll, I, I've, I, bleh, sorry, I am, I am weary that we are sort of running out of time now. So if I can get to it, I do want to show very quickly. Um, and I, I'll put the link to this team. If you sign up to this team, you can go and have a play with everything that we've put in there um, in your own time here. Uh, but the peer programming team, um, we have, uh, I have a make a recipe um, challenge, which is from Tony's own, um, curriculum that she's written for our curriculum hub so if you are interested in this this is, this is like lesson one of a enormous scheme of work which i think i think you're in the middle of updating aren't you Tony? yeah i don't yeah, so more that. work to do because you're a busy <laughs> yeah updating that and updating sql and um, so to be honest like i can't take credit for this so it's the it's all the code dot um, code club stuff and the raspberry pi things because i think their examples are so so good and so engaging um, and then i've just kind of made it in a way that's it's not just so worksheety you know like that pupils have to do a little bit more thinking and um, so so yeah it's all kind of taken inspired from there and um, but yeah update come very soon which is exciting and uh, the, what I've done is just taken that and I turned it into a group project um, and the idea would be is that you get a group of students to build uh, a recipe and that you can bring them all together and you can do that in a much shorter time than you would if you set them down to do that individually um, mm -hmm. the way I've done that in Repit just so you know where all this stuff is is when you create a project you do get to choose between an individual or a group now, currently, there's no way of swapping between. So what I normally do is if I'm not sure, I'll make it a group project and just set the maximum size to one. So back on that page again, uh, the self-grouping is something that you can turn on or turn off, up to you. You've seen what self-grouping looks like. So I left that on for you for the last one. Uh, and you can set the maximum group size if you want. Um, I'm thinking about four for a web development project. That might be probably enough. Um, and then once you've got all your students in here, I can, if I want to, or to assign you to groups and that just randomly picks and selects you and puts you in groups there you can now if you want to go in and have a look and, and work together to build that but we haven't really got the time unfortunately tonight that we were expecting to have to go through and have a go at that
But that is now assigned, and you you saw how much easier that was when we have everyone in the team already. Mm -hmm. It is just a case yeah. of click, click, and you can put people in the groups. And if you've got people you specifically want to work together, you can put them together. If you want people that you want to keep apart, you can keep them apart, and you can even I just change. I want to it. add that. So that's that's so exciting. I can't I can't wait to try that. That's that's amazing. Well, one of the things I do when I got big classes is, is I use the auto auto assign button, and then afterwards, and I'll show you this there. Afterwards, just go into the groups and you can just drag and drop people around. Oh, you want to take somebody out. Maybe somebody's not yeah. pulling their weight or something, you can pop them out. Yeah. So I'm picking especially on people like, here. But... Yeah, but especially like if a kid's off and things as well, you know, it's really easy to do. So that's amazing. That's so good. And I'm sure we've all been in situations where you've had a student that's having a, a friendship issue and they just don't want to be working with anybody. They want yeah. to work on their own. Well, I could just create a group and put one person in it and they can do what they can do there. So there's a lot of a lot of flexibility in this grouping system, which a lot of people don't use because it is a bit hidden away in our interface. But what this does is it makes one REPL and multiplies it. So when they submit that, then they're all linked to the mark for that particular piece of work, That's which is cool. really pretty cool and very, very easy to set up. No link sharing or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so that's group projects. And group projects have you know, a, a reasonable impact, I think. Uh, and web development projects, especially if you are like in charge of trying to make a website for a club or a, a team or a subject, like we've all tried to run websites for our own department and keep them up to date. And you know that at some point in February, you're two months out of date and you're desperately trying to pull resources in for the exams and stuff like that. Well, I would suggest to you, why not make part of your curriculum in the year, pick a, pick a year group and make them create it. Make mm -hmm. one group project with a class full in there and make them build and maintain your website. Now, we know the nice thing about any REPL that has a web element in it is it's immediately online. So if I go into this one again, as soon as you see the web view, we can take that URL, and that is a live website on the open internet already. So if you want to build something where students can go and, and build something really cool and you know have the ability to update it quickly for you, you can do that. And of course, with the multiplayer feature, you can remove people if they're being silly and uh, move things back. I'm just going to pick up a question from Jason here. There's not at the moment, Jason, unfortunately, there's no way to do that. What I tend to do is uh, create a new group project and just copy and paste the resources into there. Um, that's the only way to do it at the moment. Uh, but we are um, we are aware that that is a thing people want to do. Um, Okay, so the only thing I've got left really to talk about, Tony, is just to give you a quick demo of the uh, of the new AI features and how that can simulate it. And we've seen a bit of a spoiler of this already, haven't we? Because yeah, we're doing this for us. <laughs> my goodness, it's pretty goodness. cool. Now, now, um, I think I think our, our CEO and our co-founder Amjad has tweeted out um, a, a concept of what we want Ghostwriter to like eventually be like, um, which is quite cool. And the idea is that it would essentially be a peer programmer for you. So somebody that can suggest code code and, and, and things like that. Um, but cool. what Ghostwriter is, is an, like essentially autocomplete for code. And we can start it out, I'll start it out. And if you want to accept its changes, we just click tab. So like in this case, I've got those together. So I might want to go and ask for something else then. I might want to go and ask for, I can't remember what it, what it was. It was um, a method of cooking. Um, so I could do cooking equals, and then suggest something for me and I just press tab to complete and it's really nice and it's a, this feature at the moment is is, is completely beta um, and you have to put your name down and get on a waiting list to try it out it will eventually be a paid feature you can imagine because it works very it's very very helpful if you're doing proper software development um, I find it very very helpful for me when I'm trying to teach like a big concept somebody's asked mm -hmm. me a question and I very quickly need to build an example that's maybe 20 or 30 lines of code this yeah. is a lifesaver because that I can smash through it. something quite quickly. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Um, yeah. And it, it does it does more than that. It does bigger things than that. But I, the, the, the thing I love about Ghostwriter is just how subtle it is in the background. Mm -hmm. The other thing we've got is the generate code feature, where you can give it a prompt. Um, now, I have in the past given this system prompts from um, the Welsh NEAs. And the Welsh NEAs are like for GCSE, they're just like, you must build this. And I'll be honest, yeah. they don't give us very exciting things to build. Like it's normally a shock or something, you know, but you can literally copy and paste that into one of these prompts. And it does, it does a job of getting about 90% of the way there in, 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 in a few clicks. Um, so we'll try something out. It's always a bit, a bit scary trying out AI code generation when you're live. Uh, but what can we build here? Let's say um, uh, 
a loop to count to 100. If we can get something. Oh, here we go. A loop to count to 100. And I can just click insert and we've got one in there. Now, if That's you're like Tony and you don't, you, you know, you know the concepts of programming, but maybe not the syntax of Python, these two things work really well. And, you know, peer programming as an idea works nicely when you've got somebody with different skill sets, don't you? Um, That's so cool. I'm so excited. Uh, I, th I think it's pretty cool. And I'll just show you very quickly the one I love because everyone forgets this. If you highlight some code, you right click, there's an explain code function as well. And for your new learners, that That's so is good. worth its weight in gold, isn't it? Just to say, yeah. what, what does that do then? Give me yeah. a, and a I, bit And more I think it's that thing of like, there's your, you know, there's only one of you and you can only, computing is, is so unique in that way that you can't just go around the classroom all the time. You know, sometimes you are stuck at, you know, with a person for a long time. So having that feature, <laughs> oh my goodness, like that's a, that's a game changer. Like that's amazing that kids can sort of use that and you can still get around people more. So, oh, that's, that's awesome. It, that's just me and my I can't wait to play with it. <laughs> Well, all this, so most of this is already available in, um, I think, in Hacker Plan. Certainly, generate code and explain code. I think are. It's always hard to remember because we're, you know, I because I, I work for Replit. My I get most of the new yeah. stuff a bit earlier to try it out. Uh, but Ghost Writer is something that's in beta at the moment, and honestly, yeah. is really, really, really helpful. Um, so I've had a, a question. I've had a, just a second a question from Lara to show the groupings um, how to group again. So I'm very quickly going to jump back and do that if that's all right before we finish up. Sorry. Um, if I can find my grouping window, oh, here we go. Um, so if you want to create something in Teams that has a group, create a project and straight away, you get given the option down the bottom here to group a project. Click that, that turns it into a group project. If you want students to be able to group themselves, you need to turn that on as well. And you can set the maximum group size. But basically, once you've clicked that toggle switch, it's a group project. And when you go then into your uh, kebab menu on any of the group projects, to the bottom one because that's a bit more exciting and click edit projects you get all the group settings including the ability to drag and drop groups hopefully laura that helps you out a little bit there um i do um training for this sort of stuff uh, once a month on our basics uh, workshop and i've also got videos which um tony um might have had a hand in giving me ideas and suggestions for what videos i was creating <laughs> all the to do little bit. <laughs> please help me um it was, yeah, it was yeah. quite nice though because for a while, I was just getting uh, DMs on Twitter from Tony going, could there be a video about this? And I just added it to my list and eventually <laughs> recorded them. Um, so, yeah, videos, sorry, Tony, videos do exist no. for all that stuff. Um, and I think we'll we'll take a little bit of a pause now um, and see if we've got any questions to come in. So if you do have any questions, you want to pop it in the chat. We'll um, happily answer that. Uh, Laura, uh, Brittany's tried to answer you already, I think. But uh, if you can't see students and those options, it should do make sure you're in, in your team for EDU and do make sure there are people in that team. Otherwise, you won't see a lot of these options popping up. Um, I, I do want to say thank you to you, um, Tony, because um, I've been pressing you to do something like this for a while. And I, I do feel bad. Uh, I finally, finally, in the other day, with all the extra work you do, all uh, how busy you are as a person. So I really appreciate the fact that you've come on to share your experience with this and, and your thoughts uh, with us all. Um, no, so thank, thank you, you very much. much. No, thank you. It's, it's, um, no, I've, I've loved it. Pleasure. And and it's having Fantastic. that um, being able to speak with other people as well. And um, yeah, and again, feel free if anybody um, wants to reach out or anything. Like I'm always happy to help as well. And I, and I know David does as well. So um, yeah, like feel free. Um, any questions, just give us a shout. And I think it's that kind of collective thing of like it's not trying to make or for me, it's never been about trying to make my school the best school or whatever. It's trying to make computing as a whole the best subject possible because ultimately it is and we all know that um, yeah so it's, it's helping each other and like I've learned a lot already like just from being in the session with you like that little um drawing thing like that that's so cool um so yeah it's, it's having those moments to chat with other teachers and things as well so no more than happy to and um, thank you for having me that's, that's, that's great and I, I think it's really important that you know none of us got into teaching to be the best in our own little corner of the world mm -hmm. we want the students to do better don't we yeah. and the way we get better teachers is by sharing and getting involved in stuff like this and and really making sure that what's the phrase like a a, a rising tide raises all the boats yeah um, exactly. that's been used in poor context at the moment politically so maybe i shouldn't be saying <laughs> that but, um in the world of education it is very true isn't it um i think tony will go on to to, to um sort of chilling your stuff for a second if that's all right yeah, um, so so this is a the project that i mentioned at the start with computing science scotland and um, kind of like a grassroots initiative of teachers 
um, getting together and trying to help each other. So um, Darren Brown has been working on a shared drive for a, a very long time. And then um, we've came together and Ian um, Simpson has helped finally make it more searchable, which is really exciting because obviously Google Drive can get really like cluttered and you know quite busy and it's quite hard to find resources. But um, he's managed to put an interface on it that you can now search for things. So absolute game changer. So um, we've just launched this. So it's, it's really basic site by means now that if you are looking for a resource on um, the CSS drive, you can just search for it, which is amazing. So um, yeah, a lot of work being going on behind the scenes for that. So we're excited to share that. Um, and of course, like, this is open to everybody. Like I know it's Computing Science Scotland, but feel free, like anybody can join this, like computing teacher, if it, if it helps people um, and helps kids, like um, feel free to join. So don't feel, be, be put off by the name. <laughs> um, yeah, we would love to have more people in it. And um, then we've also got like CSS Meets and our, our little magazine thing as well. So um, all of those sessions and everything that is there for any computing science teacher or anybody to live in the subject who is interested. So feel free to, to sign up and um, yeah, just get involved and we're really happy to help where we can. Um, and then the other mother hat, obviously my, my dress coat hat, um, got lots going on. So again, that's also open to like all primary, all secondary schools across the world, really. Like if anybody wants it, um, we usually get most activity in the UK, but we do annual coding events. Um, so the, the one that we've got one um, open just now, coding competition, it's Halloween coding competition. And we've changed this format just now as well. So it's not just scratch, it's open to everything and anything. So it just means that you can embed those things within your curriculum and make it you know Halloween themed but there's also chances of great prizes up for grabs as well and we'll have Christmas ones coming up um but then we've also got like posters we do so I've done this for a few um teachers in schools in England so we've got like I choose computer science um, and then in Scotland computing science but all three um and it's really that thing of like trying to promote the pupils as being the role models and the peers and um yeah it's just just a little thing that we're doing so all three so if you want a poster like we're more than happy to to get that out and make them for you um, and then for Scotland we've got three awards that we're handing out to every school every secondary school in Scotland so it's called the Hopper Award for best female in computing science and we also got permission from the Tudor family which is amazing to have one for um, best male pupil as well again all free so if anybody wants one like just go onto the website and sign up for other um, people so like in Wales and England and things as well if anybody does want them they can be bought and um, but it's just we only got funding obviously to provide one for every school in Scotland so far and then the last thing is, of course, um, if you are trying to get girls into computing, that's definitely a, a passionate, like an area that I'm really passionate about. So we've got resources and we've got like materials for if you want to run a club. So there's a lovely photo there of um, St. Ninian's School, who do an incredible job. And um, yeah, again, just online girls coding club, really. Um, but the, the great thing about dress code as well is we're so flexible. So if, if people do want things or we'd like to see things and we're able to do it, um, we, we can totally just spin it up if we can. So again, reach out, let me know if anybody wants something or needs something and if I can do it um, through dress codes or through CSS, we would love to help as well. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll flood the talent pipeline and have all these amazing students um, um, coming from Scotland and obviously the UK as well. So, and, and everywhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really exciting. That's Kenny Mack. My You're shipping those awards <laughs> around the world now before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll we'll just say that dress code is a, is, a, is an amazing uh, achievement. Um, honestly, Tony, uh, my my daughter's only sort of four and a half, five at the moment, um, but I think about how to get her into coding and, and entertained by it every day. And I think just having um, organisations like dress code just give me so many ideas because oh, as a as, as a white man, I didn't need much help to be shown that coding was for me. But that representation mm -hmm. is is really important. So thank you yeah. so much for all the work you do on that. We, you know, Thank you. He's appreciated. Um, and I think that's it from us tonight. So as Tony did say, if you do want to have a chat to us, please do get in touch um, on Twitter. Um, and don't forget that we do run these um, uh, these uh, no assembly required workshops uh, once a month, every month, where we try to look at pedagogy and the different sort of nerdery that comes with um, teaching computer science and try and share it in a nice forum. Um, I have no idea who's doing it next month because we're going to start, uh, we've got a new uh, program of uh, reps for education uh, and they'll be getting involved with it. But I can tell you now, we've done a bunch of interviews for that and the people are amazing. Um, we'll see if they can top Tony. I don't oh, know. But the the opportunity is there. Yeah, so Andy high bar for the first one of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no again like that was awesome like thank you so much and again lovely to meet everybody in the chat and things as well so um, yeah looking forward to getting more involved and helping out as well so yeah it's been great
Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, we will see you again. Well, I will certainly see you again. <laughs> um, and don't forget, our 100 Days of Code is completely free. Um, and it's meant to be 10, 15, 20 minutes a day of introductory coding stuff, all in Python, with my bad jokes and bald head for your um, entertainment purposes. So if you've got any new coders in your life that you think could benefit from that, please do send them a link. Um, I've not seen it used in a classroom yet, but first person to tweet me a picture of my bald face in a different classroom <laughs> will certainly be retweeted by me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. And thanks so much to Tony for joining us tonight. And we hope